let me give a couple words of uh, instruction about how the, the, the service is going to go. Um, this is intentionally a service that's got, is highly structured. There'll be responsive readings. Uh, there'll be kind of readings that are just being read to us by uh, usually either it's going to be myself or Susan. Um, there will be music at various points. There's three songs that are studded throughout uh, that are recorded things um, that are really, I think, each one's beautiful. And, um, and this is an Ash Wednesday service. It, it begins the season of Lent, and that means that this is a service dedicated to reflection and to repentance, um, dedicated um, to calling to mind where we're weak, not because we're masochists and, and love dwelling on that, but because it's only when we get honest about that um, that we discover what Paul uh, teaches us, which is that God's power is made perfect in our weakness. Um, and, uh, and so that's, that's what this time is for. I don't expect it's, it'll be a real long service. It's not like I've timed it out, though. And I'm not in a hurry, and I hope you aren't either. I mean, if something comes up and you need to log out, don't feel bad about that. Uh, but we're just going to take our time. Um, on slides that have two colors of text, some of them do, there's yellow text and white text. On slides that are like that, um, the yellow text is for uh, the, the main reader, and that'll be Susan or I. When there's two colors of text and you see white text, uh, that's for you to speak out loud where you are in your home. Now, we're going to have you keep your mics muted because otherwise the timing does not match up and it's just a crazy garble. But you in your home, whether you're just it's you yourself or whether you have another person or two or whatever with you, you guys are going to say that out loud together that's in white. So like this text here on this screen, uh, I'll be reading the yellow. You guys are going to be reading the white in your homes on your own out loud. Um, and that's generally how that's going to work whenever we do a responsive reading, and there'll be responsive readings um, throughout this service. Uh, there'll be a couple points in the, in the service later on where I might need to give another word of instruction about how we're going to handle prayer time, things like that. But we'll get to that uh, when we get to it. Um, and you can just sort of take a deep breath here. Um, and, um, and actually, I'm going to ask you to do that. Uh, we're going to do this slide here in a sec, but first, take a breath. Um, take a moment of quiet pray, uh, and then I'll begin, uh, begin us on, on this uh, slide. But uh, let's breathe, and wait, and listen in a moment of silence before God. Brothers and sisters, I invite you to uh, respond uh, in your own home, uh, reading the white text uh, at the appropriate time. Uh, let's begin our service uh, with this word that's a, a scriptural word. Return to the Lord your God, brothers and sisters, who is gracious and merciful. Make me know your ways, O oh God. Lead me in your truth and teach me. Amen. Sister Susan, would you read for us uh, this kind of theme, set of theme verses, this, this prayer of repentance from Daniel? Um, the text of this will not be on the screen. I just invite you to listen. And I know some of you are just on the phone, so you don't see things anyway. Reading from Daniel chapter 9, verses 1 through 19. Um, it was the first year of the reign of Darius the Mede, the son of Ahasuerus, who became king of the Babylonians. During the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, learned from reading the word of the Lord as revealed to Jeremiah the prophet that Jerusalem must lie desolate for 70 years. So I turned to the Lord God and pleaded with him in prayer and fasting. I also wore rough burlap 
and sprinkled myself with ashes. I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed, O oh Lord, you are a great and awesome God. You always fulfill your covenant and keep your promises of unfailing love to those who love you and obey your commands. But we have sinned and done wrong. We have rebelled against you and scorned your commands and regulations. We have refused to listen to your servants, the prophets, who spoke on your authority to our kings and princes and ancestors and to all the people of the land. Lord, you are in the right. But as you see, our faces are covered with shame. This is true of all of us, including the people of Judah and Jerusalem and all Israel, scattered near and far, wherever you have driven us because of our disloyalty to you. O oh Lord, we and our kings, princes, and ancestors are covered with shame because we have sinned against you. But the Lord our God is merciful and forgiving, even though we have rebelled against him. We have not obeyed the Lord our God, for we have not followed the instructions he gave us through his servants, the prophets. All Israel has disobeyed your instruction and turned away, refusing to listen to your voice. So now the solemn curses and judgments written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured down on us because of our sin. You have kept your word and done to us and our rulers exactly as you warned. Never has there been such a disaster as happened in Jerusalem. Every curse written against us in the law of Moses has come true. Yet we have refused to seek mercy from the Lord our God by turning from our sins and recognizing his truth. Therefore, the Lord has brought upon us the disaster he prepared. The Lord our God was right to do all of these things for we did not obey him. O oh Lord, our God, you brought lasting honor to your name by rescuing your people from Egypt in a great display of power. We have sinned and are full of wickedness. In view of all your faithful mercies, Lord, please turn your furious anger away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy mountain. All the neighboring nations mock Jerusalem and your people because of our sins and the sins of our ancestors. O oh, our God, hear your servant's prayer. Listen as I plead. For your own sake, Lord, smile again on your desolate sanctuary. O oh, my God, lean down and listen to me. Open your eyes and see our despair. See how your city... The city that bears your name lies in ruins. We make this plea, not because we deserve help, but because of your mercy. O oh Lord, hear. O oh Lord, forgive. O oh Lord, listen and act. For your own sake, do not delay. Oh my God, for your people and your city bear your name. Amen. O oh Lord God, hear. O oh Lord God, help. O oh Lord God, listen and act. Let's pray with our brother Daniel a prayer of confession. Um, I'll be reading the yellow text. You be reading that white text in uh, your own home. Remember your mercy. O oh Lord, in the love you have shown from of old. In this moment of silence, brothers and sisters, lift up in your own hearts those burdens of sin that uh, are hanging on to you.
O Lord, you relieve the troubles of my heart and you bring me out of my distress. Amen. Our first song, I Know Whom I Have Believed. Um, this version of it is a sweet, simple one by a sister in Christ. Uh, and just invite you to reflect um, on, uh, on this song and on its message.
We're going to read Isaiah 58, 6 through 12 together. And um, Susan's going to begin, uh, and then she and I will alternate with the yellow text each on each of these slides as we read this uh, set of verses back and forth once again, you'll be reading in your own home the white text. Is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice? To undo the cords of the yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and to bring the homeless poor into your house? Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help and the Lord will say, here I am. If you offer your food to the hungry, and satisfy the needs of the afflicted. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations to come. Jesus, what a friend for sinners. Hear and meditate again upon this song, brothers and sisters. If you catch on to the refrain, um, feel free to sing along in, in your home. I was doing that with the refrain uh, during the last one. Jesus, what a friend for sinners, Jesus, lover of my soul. Friends may fail me, foes assail me, He, my Savior, makes me whole.
you're going to hear two scriptures. I'm going to read the first, which is from the Gospel of Matthew. Susan will read uh, the one after that um, in the book of 2 Corinthians. This is a call, uh, both really in their own way, to the spiritual practice of fasting. And it is traditional um, during the season of Lent, as we get close to Easter, to fast. It's been a practice, as far as we can tell, since the very first century or two of the church, uh, something that Christians inherited from our Jewish forebearers. And both Jesus and many of the Old Testament prophets warned that our fasting had to be more than about an outward observance. It, it had to be a spiritual practice, a practice from the heart. It had to be not merely the giving up of something, but it had to be about embracing something. It had to be about embracing someone, embracing God and all that he has for us. And of course, to do that, there are certain things we have to let go of, certain sins we have to turn our back on, certain opportunities we have to say no to. Um, and if we're not willing to say those no's, we, we can't say the great and important yes that Jesus is calling us to say to God. So here's Matthew chapter 6, um, verses 16 to 21. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their full reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your father who sees, who lives in secret and who sees in secret and he will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, brothers and sisters, there your heart will be also. From 2 Corinthians. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is an acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, we're going to pray together, and uh, the way that'll work is, is like this. Um, on each of the slides you're going to see, and let me go one more slide forward, um, either Susan and I will, will read the thing that's in yellow at the top. If you can't see, if you're on the phone, you'll hear this, but, but there'll be a, a prayer of some kind that Susan and I will say. But then there's going to be some silence. In that silence, you can pray as an individual in your heart in line with, with the theme of that moment, but you can also pray out loud and multiple people can do that, right? Like you can just speak out. And if, if there is a thing on your heart um, that the spirit is, is putting there to, 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 to a, a prayer of, it could be, it could be a prayer of thanks for mercy received. It could be a prayer for mercy or help in something for yourself or somebody else. That's okay. We just, those will be moments where prayer can happen either silently in each of our homes, or you can unmute yourself. That, that's what I'm saying is you can unmute yourself so that we hear you. And you can lead us in prayer during those moments. Um, if you mean to do that, remember to unmute yourself so that we can join you in that prayer. Um, and there's no pressure on that either way. Each of those moments of silence can just be silence and we'll pray in that silence. But if anybody does want to unmute and pray in any of those silences, that, that is what that's for as well. Um, so we're going to begin, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to pray uh, for us uh, the words that some of you at least can see on this slide. Uh, and then Susan and I will alternate. Um, you will see uh, that, that um, on each of these coming slides, Susan or I will, will end that quiet time by saying, you know, in your mercy, and then each of you will respond, Lord, hear our prayer. 
So that's kind of the structure of how we'll go through this prayer time, uh, leading in now to towards the, the conclusion of our service. But um, let's pray. Let's pray together. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray. That's why this same very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. God, who brings release to troubled spirits, we offer our prayers in the name of Jesus. Lord God, anybody um, here tonight who's troubled in their spirit, just pray your blessing upon them. I pray for peace that passes understanding. I pray for help to come to them from the outside. I pray for friends to journey with them. I pray, Lord God, for answers to questions that seem unanswerable. I pray your comfort be upon them. Lord, I pray that your love is enough for me in the journey I'm taking to make myself healthy. Let me know that your love and my faith in you is enough to fill me, and I don't need to fill my body with things instead of my soul. Amen. I want to make a prayer. You know, God works in mysterious ways. You know what I'm saying? In all different relationships in life. If you always think about him and you listen to his music, you can get knowledge and wisdom out of it. I mean, I've been, I've been in church all my life getting shoes. All my life. And I ask God to keep strengthening me. To keep pulling forward. Not backwards, but forward. With his spirit. Yes, Lord. With the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But it's also music there. Mm. And... I just want everyone to know God is good. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. The fast you want for us, God, brings light and healing. We pray for ourselves and for those who are dear to us. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer.
The fast you command brings relief to the heavy laden. We pray for our community and for our neighbors. Lord, I pray for the east side. I pray for our neighborhood. I pray for the homeless, in particular right now, who have had a real hard few days with this weather. And I ask for your mercy. I ask that they'd be found, there'd be people to bring them in, there'd be places to house them. I ask, um, Lord God, for those struggling with addiction, those families with not enough to eat, uh, those places where there's abuse or trouble. And I just pray, God, um, that your light uh, would be breaking in uh, at every household and every chink in everybody's armor. Um, you, know, you would help us, God, to be bearers of your good news and exemplars of your love and vessels of your grace, that our little church, God, could be a lighthouse on the corner, a safe house for the broken, um, a hospital for sin sick people, starting with us. And um, they ask we, we could be part of your answer to the hurt in our world, and in particular in our little corner of it there on, on the east side. In your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. The fast you choose, God, is a sharing of our bread with the hungry. We pray for the church in all places that we may bear witness to your reign of grace, peace, and joy. In your mercy, Lord, hear your prayer. The fast you desire loses the bonds of injustice. We pray for the world and for all who are ensnared, ensnared in greed, violence, or oppression. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. The fast you give, God, is a feast for our souls. We pray that you would fill our hearts afresh with the radiance of your goodness and love.
in your mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. Brothers and sisters, um, the way we're going to end our service um, is with this reading, uh, which is from Isaiah 61. And then uh, we'll have a song. And, uh, and then we'll just close with the blessing. So quick word about this reading and then about the song. So the image of ashes um, has shown up at least twice already in, in the readings and in, in the prayers. Um, in the passage from Daniel that Susan read, Daniel prays that rather remarkable prayer of uh, confession while wearing sackcloth and having doused himself. It's not just a sprinkling. I mean, like he, he, somebody in that culture, what you would do to show your repentance is you would just heap ashes into your hair and onto your body. Um, and those ashes were a sign that you were sorry, right, at the level of being sorry, but it was also a recognition that I, by my sin, have embraced death rather than life. I, by my sin, have reduced my life to ashes. Um, you know, it's a burnt over thing that, that I've made of my life by my sin. And, uh, and that, that's part of the symbolism, part of the power of the symbolism of the ashes of repentance. What I want you to look for in this passage as we read it is when we, when we douse ourselves with ashes, when we accept the ashes of repentance, God comes and offers an exchange. I, I think I may have even mentioned this on Sunday. But, but here, from the prophet Isaiah, what God says to us, what he says he will give us if we bring him ashes. It's a wonderful, beautiful gift he gives. And it's why this time of Lent is, is a time of hope. It's why it is followed by Easter. Because we don't have to stay in the ash heap. Um, if we accept the ashes of repentance. God gives us something beautiful in return. He lifts us up and he lifts us out and he takes us someplace beautiful. The other word of introduction I'll give uh, to the song that will follow this uh, set of verses is, is, uh, is just a, a little story. Uh, this week, as I was putting this service together, I was looking for songs and, and looking for elements to use. And uh, I found the song that I'm going to play for you. It's a, it's a version of a, of a, of a well-known song. It's, it's a contemporary version. I'd not heard this particular version of the song before. And uh, I hit play on it to see what it would be. And uh, after about 60 seconds, I was crying pretty hard. <laughs> there were tears on my cheeks. And, um, and I had a couple of those sort of deep, fluttery kind of breaths. And I was thinking about um, how good Jesus is to let a sinner like me come near to him. How good he is to offer me that invitation uh, to come. And right as I was kind of crying <laughs> pretty hard, uh, Becca happened to walk down the basement steps at that exact moment. Uh, and <laughs> I remember just sort of being a little sort of embarrassed, chagrined, uh, uh, you know, that uh, like, what, what are you doing down here? I'm just crying in front of my computer because Jesus is really good, <laughs> you know. Um, and, uh, and I just hope, I don't know what your reaction to that song will be, but, but where's my hope? That sometime tonight, or in the coming day, you will be hit in a deep way, in your gut, in your soul, in your heart, by how good Jesus is, and by how merciful he is, and how that mercy covers your sins, that you will hear him inviting you to come, to come and receive in place of the ashes of, of sin, the burnt over remains of your life, a garland of beauty. With that, let me read for you these words from Isaiah and play for you this song that I've introduced. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news 
to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of our Lord's favor and the day of the judgment of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those mourners in Zion, to give them a garland of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord meant to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Amen. Come, fellow sinners, poor and needy, come to Jesus. sinners poor and needy weak and wounded sick and sore Jesus ready sends to save you full of pity love and power I will arise and go to Jesus
Come sinners, come to the one who can heal, come to the one who already died to forgive you, come to the one who made you and can remake you, come to the one who gave you life and can give it to you afresh, come to the source of mercy, come to Jesus. He'll give you for ashes beauty. He'll give you for your sin righteousness. He'll give you for your hurt all his glory. He loves you and he's calling you this Lent, this season, this year in the midst of all this hardness. He's calling you by name to him to walk with him, to learn from him the better way, to lay down the heavy yoke and to pick up his light one. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens. Take my yoke from me and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will from me find rest for your souls. Go and walk with Jesus, the Lenten road, all the way through to Easter. Blessings upon you as you go, guys, um, and uh, feel free.